Hello everybody, um, it's Becky Brown, Associate Pastor here at First Gen Methodist Church, and I'm glad that you've joined me for prayer time today. Um, it is not live. We have been doing prayer time live at noon on Wednesdays, and um, we are shifting to pre-recorded um, sometime on Wednesday morning. Uh, so if you are wanting to send me prayer requests, um, please do so by Wednesday morning in the early morning um, so I can make sure to include you in the prayer time. Um, if you miss that and I've already recorded, then we'll make sure to um, ask you if you'd like for this to be mentioned on Sunday. Um, and if not, we'll mention next week in our prayer time. Um, but that's um, something that we're doing. That we're trying to transition um, as we are doing a lot more in person and um, spending time face to face. I still want to provide this opportunity for you all who will be at home or who like to um, to tune in to prayer time in this way. Um, so I'll start today with our, our gospel lesson out of John chapter 6, um, the first 21 verses. Um, this is the lectionary for this Sunday. And I will, I will be preaching this Sunday, but not on this text, um, but would like to share it with you, familiar stories. After, after this... Jesus went to the other side of the Sea of Galilee, also called the Sea of Tiberias. A large crowd kept following him because they saw the signs that he was doing for the sick. Jesus went up to the mountain and sat down there with his disciples. Now the Passover, the festival of the Jews, was near. When he looked up and saw a large crowd coming toward him, Jesus said to Philip, "'Where are we to buy bread for these people to eat?' He said this to test him, for he knew himself what he was going to do. Philip answered him, Six months' wages would not buy enough bread for each of them to get a little. One of the disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, There's a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish, but what are they among so many people? Jesus said, Make the people sit down. Now there was a great deal of grass in the place, so they sat down, about 5,000 in all. Then Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed them to those who were seated. So also the fish, as much as they wanted. When they were satisfied, he told his disciples, Gather up the fragments left over, so that nothing may be lost. So they gathered them up, and from the fragments of the five barley loaves left by those who had eaten, they filled twelve baskets. When the people saw the sign that he had done, they began to say, this is indeed the prophet who has come to enter the world. When Jesus realized that they were about to come and take, a, take him by force to make him king, he withdrew again to the mountain himself. When the evening came, his disciples went down to the sea, got into a boat and started across the sea to Capernaum. It was now dark and Jesus had not yet come to them. The sea became rough because a strong wind was blowing. When they had rowed about three or four miles, they saw Jesus walking on the sea and coming near the boat, and they were terrified. But he said to them, It is I. Do not be afraid. When they wanted to take him into the boat, then they wanted to take him into the boat, and immediately the boat reached the land toward which they were going. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. And we say, thanks be to God. So this is quite a long passage, especially one to read aloud and read in worship. And sometimes we might make it a little shorter um, because of that. But um, to me, it's real important that we read the Bible in larger sections. Um, I always find it's helpful to know what came before and what came after, and it helps with context and um, helps center us in the story um, because it's a one big story or stories of people who've experienced God and who've experienced Jesus. And so this, um, this, these stories... Um, had a connection for me that I hadn't made in a long time. And that was um, this, this centered really around what Jesus does. So we have the feeding of the 5,000 story that we've heard so many times and so many sermons have been preached on it. At least I have a lot of sermons in my mind when I read this text. Um, and then, you know, after that experience and the people recognize, huh, this is really the prophet. 
Um, and then he, then of course things get a little intense and they were gonna force him to make him king. And so Jesus withdrew um, to the mountain by himself. And so this is where the story of Jesus walking on the water in John comes. Um, it begins with Jesus' absence. Um, so it's almost as if the disciples waited around for Jesus to come back from the mountain, you know, come out of hiding, so to speak, from the crowds. And um, it became evening and the disciples said, well, I guess we should get a move on it. You know, maybe we should move on to where we had planned to visit next. Um, so they're waiting, waiting, you know, kind of in the dark. Um, and they thought, thought, well, maybe Jesus went ahead. You know, I wonder about the disciples' decision making here in this part of the story. You know, they just left him and got in the boat and decided, well, we'll just um, go across to Capernaum because that's where he said we were going next. Um, and so they do that. And so there they are, um, traveling in a boat across the sea in the dark. Jesus was not with them. And the sea became rough, um, and strong wind was there, and the, was blowing, and so it became a perilous journey in the boat. And they had rowed about three or four miles across the water. And after this experience... Jesus appears walking on the water. And um, of course, they were terrified. You know, it's not natural to see someone walking on the water. And um, Jesus said to them, it's I, you know, don't be afraid. And then right when they were about to take him into the boat, they arrived at the shore. Um, they were, they had landed where they were, where they were going in the first place. Um, so when I think about this story, I think, you know, what is the nature of Jesus in this story? What's, what's Jesus' um, situation, you know? So he's spending time on the mountain in prayer, perhaps, um, resting, perhaps, um, spending time with God, wondering where he should be going next, probably contemplating if he should really be king because this is what the people have tried to force him to become. Um, and, you know, after some time, he realizes the disciples have left him. Um, so does he arrive at the shore uh, where the boat was, where they were going to set off to leave to go to Capernaum, and then decided, well, I'll just walk. <laughs> you know, what, what happened there? Um, so I wonder, you know, how, how this story came to be, really. That is my question. Um, you know, and, but it's just a mystery. Um, but this story, Jesus walking on the water, is one that is in... Um, several of our Gospels, so it's definitely one that the writers wanted us to hear about and know about, um, and it's, um, you know, it validates the story even more because there are more versions of it um, than just the one. So I don't know, let me know what you think about that. I'd like to share um, concerns now, um, prayer concerns from um, those who have mentioned them to us. Um, we continue to pray for Kathy McNeil and Willie Hubbard. There's our staff who are continuing to receive treatments for cancer. Um, we continue to pray for Betty Lou, Willie's wife, who is home with hospice care. And we have several who we've been praying for um, who are receiving cancer treatments. Um, so we continue to pray for them as they endure their journey. We pray for Nancy Ray, Irene Noland, Brenda Griswold, and Dismuk. Connie, Robert Clouser, Heather, Andrew, Mike, Scott, Camp Marks, uh, Mrs. Joyce Herring, Richard Owens, Rose, Stephen, and Colton Jenkins. Um, so many of these are members of our church, and several of them are um, family members of our church members or dear friends. Um, so we lift them up in prayer today. We also remember Katherine Hyatt, who is receiving hospice care at home, and Elise McSwain's sister Carol um, continues to decline in health as well. Um, we will continue to pray for Janice um, Laudier's daughter, who needs a new job, and Wanda Cool's great-nephew Sailor. 
We continue to pray for babies who were born prematurely. Um, there are two babies that we're praying for. Um, one is a friend of Debbie Thomas. Um, the premature baby, William, is in need of prayer, um, struggling with breathing. Also um, received a prayer concern from Sunday for the Jesus family who had a new baby born and is in the NICU as well. So prayers for them. We continue to pray for Loy Lilly, who's at home dealing with dementia. And we pray for Wani Harden and Betsy. Um, we have received word that Wani has moved to the Givens Healthcare section um, and his health is declining. Um, so we pray for Wani and Betsy. It's a difficult time for them. Um, Debbie Ray has asked for prayers for their family as they travel to Michigan for some good old family time together. Um, we continue to pray um, for um, dear friends, including Nancy Hood. She asks for prayers for her son, Ryan. Um, their son, Ryan, has cellulitis, and he lives in Tampa. And um, he, this condition is, is, is very complicated for him, and it's um, a very scary thing um, for him to experience because of other health issues connected to this. Um, so the prayer request was that he was to, waiting to be admitted to the hospital, so our prayer is that that has happened and that he is there. We also pray for Jim Cooper today, who's having rotator cuff surgery. So we pray for him that all goes well. We have one death um, since we last were together that we will pray for the Kaler family. Claude Kaler is a retired minister. He just retired and um, died in a bicycle accident very suddenly um, over the weekend. And so prayers for his family um, at such a tragic loss and so many friends who love him and um, are missing their friend. We have several also who have requested to not be mentioned. Um, several who are dealing with new diagnoses, um, who are waiting for results from tests. Um, so we will lift them up as that's a very difficult time um, for them and for us as we support them. So let us pray together. Holy God, we ask that you would continue to knit us together as a community of faith. As we continue to live faithfully reading our Bibles, learning, new things that you offer to us through your Holy Spirit. May we continue to have the conversations together, to ask the questions, to hear the, what, what you are laying upon people's hearts and the ways that we understand who you are and who we are to continue to become. We ask that in our faithfulness, we, we continue to spend time in prayer daily praying for the needs that we know of that we've mentioned um, today in this prayer time, as well as the needs of our own and those that we don't feel comfortable mentioning to anyone else. God, we know that so many that we love and care for struggle and it breaks our hearts to hear them. It's so difficult to wait on results from the doctor and from scans and from tests. It's so difficult to wait and to experience treatments month after month after month and the side effects that come with them. It's difficult to hear the news that no one ever wants to hear, which is there's a new diagnosis and we don't know what to do yet. So we pray for all of us and for all that we love and care for, for those who are experiencing deep grief and loss for those who are continuing to navigate difficult surgeries and healing, for those who are nearing the end of their life, for the many who seek you and are having trouble finding you, and for others who have, who have abandoned faith altogether because it doesn't make sense right now. We pray that you would continue to be the God that you are, <laughs> reaching into our hearts, helping to form and shape us because we want to have your heart. We want to have your spirit. And we know that in that process, there is hope, there is peace, there's transformation, there's deep love, mercy, and compassion. So we ask that you would continue to shape us into your likeness. We ask all these things in the name of Jesus Christ who taught us to pray. 
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Thanks for joining me today. I look forward to spending time with you again. And if you are a regular um, worshiper, um, attender of uh, the live prayer time with me, I would love for you to share with me your thoughts um, about how to continue this prayer time together. I would love to share with you in person in some way, if that is something that is feasible for you. Um, I don't want to um, miss out on this opportunity um, to hear the concerns of our people and to spend time in devotion and prayer. So um, please do reach out to me through text, phone call, email. Um, I would look forward to hearing from you. And until next week, go in peace. <laughs>